Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Um, today I want to talk PowerPC. Um, this channel has been lacking PowerPC over the past few months and uh, I've always wanted to do one of these videos properly and um, well, what is the state of PowerPC in 2013? Um, it's going to be quite modular. Um, I'm going to go G G3, G4, G5, uh, main machine, secondary machine, whatever you want to do with it. And um, yeah, so uh, let's get started. So, G3. Um, what can you use your G3 G for in 2013? Um, honestly, guys, primary use, don't even consider it. The G3 is very, very, very dated now. Um, the, the speed jump between a G3 machine uh, even like a really high spec G3 machine, 900 megahertz, 640 megs of RAM, that sort of thing, um, up to a very low end G4, 450 megahertz, 640 megs of RAM. The speed increase you're going to get is just out of this world. Um, so primary machine completely out the window. Don't even bother considering it. Whether it's an iBook G3, a Power Mac G3, blue and white. Primary use you'd be incredibly, incredibly patient uh, if you could put up with a G3 machine in 2013 for main machine use. Secondary machine use, though, is a completely different kettle of fish. Um, right here, 12-inch iBook G3, 500 megahertz, um, 384 megs of RAM, I believe, um, a 10 gigabyte hard drive, which I always uh, find quite comical. It's a beautiful machine, guys. Um, they're built like absolute bricks. They are the build quality. It's it's unbelievable, and this thing looks better than most machines, most laptops that OEM PC manufacturers put out now today. And this machine came out in two thousand and one. Um, yeah, what is it that machine used for? It's downstairs. It lives downstairs, um, and whenever someone wants to find something in the dictionary or thesaurus or type something up in word and they can't do it on a tablet because you need a proper keyboard stuff like that is brilliant pick up for five minutes uh... check emails um, text editing word processing stuff like that it's going to do it without a hitch i mean it's not going to be incredibly fast i mean my nexus seven bench is fourteen hundred in geekbench that that would struggle to get two hundred and fifty <laughs> that's the sort of speed difference you're going to you're just going to have to come to terms with if you're looking to buy a G3 machine for secondary use. But build quality, superb. Keyboard, absolutely brilliant. Um, screen, superb. Um, really, really nice screens in those iBooks. And just pick up and go, dictionary, calculator, little stuff like that. Um, it's unbelievable. And for the price they're going for, they're going for like 20, 30 quid, the iBook G3s. They're really, really great just to have a little, it's a little item to have downstairs in the family room where you can just pick it up and do whatever. I mean, you can surf the web on there, but it's going to be pretty painful. So, G3, primary machine, no go. Secondary machine, or third machine, or fourth machine, or whatever, it, it's going to be good. I still recommend going for a higher spec one. Forget iBook clamshells, they're very slow. Forget, um, an early iBook then, I mean, it, it does all of those stuff but it crawls under Tiger. Um, if you're going to get yourself a G3 at this this point as a secondary machine, you've got to go something like a 900 megahertz uh, top of the line, 12 inch, uh, max out the RAM, 640 megs, stick a nice little, uh, it doesn't even have to be a big hard drive in there, just a, something that's going to be a step up from the originalness in there, but they are a little bit of a nightmare to uh, open. but. Really, really nice machines. Secondary machine. I got an iMac G3 up there. Um, the speakers in them are incredible. It, 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 an iMac G3 would still make an incredible jukebox. I mean, you don't require much horsepower to uh, play music. So, an iMac G3 would make a really good jukebox. An iBook G3 would make a really, really nice little um, family dictionary slash calculator thing. <laughs> and uh, a Power Mac G3 OS9 gaming. Um, you can get decent little graphics cards to put in those things, max out the RAM to a gig. Um, the blue and white G3s are really, really nice, really nice design. Uh, again, built like absolute tanks, they're bulletproof. 
Um, and yeah, gaming on a, on a G3 blue and white is pretty good. So that's G3, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you're going to be buying a G3, you know what you're getting into. G4s now. Now this is where it starts to get very, very interesting because the G4 was uh, manufactured over such a long period of time. Um, Starting out with the with the early uh, Power Mac G4s going all the way through into 2006 with the top of the line 1.67 gigahertz uh, PowerBook G4s. Um, if you want, I I still am perfectly fine. Um, I think a G3 is a seriously seriously nice nice machine, um, and pa primary machine use. I've got a PowerBook G3 here. A pa PowerBook G3. Um, PowerBook G4, 1.33 gigahertz. Um, it maxed out the the RAM already. I will have videos coming on on this machine in the future. It's, I use it for a secondary machine because I got a Mac Pro there. But this PowerBook, you could take the Mac Pro away from me now, and I'd be able to do a lot of what I do on my Mac Pro on this PowerBook G4. It's an absolutely incredible machine. It's got the best keyboard I've ever used. That keyboard, guys, is unbeatable. You really, really have to use one. Um, the screen is really, really nice. It's a shame about 10 by 7 but whatever. Um, and it runs up to Leopard absolutely brilliantly. Um, I have a little rule in my head of um, what machines can run Leopard and what machines you should run Tiger on. Um, if you have... This is like G4, obviously. G3s cannot run Leopard, and end of story. But um, a G4... Don't bother putting Leopard on it unless you've got a core image and Quartz Extreme supported graphics card. If it doesn't have one of those things, like my eMac up there, I've got a, a one gigahertz eMac uh, with a 32 megabyte uh, Radeon 7500. It's got enough horsepower, CPU, and RAM wise to run Leopard. It's just the graphics that really, really slow stuff down. Leopard has a lot of eye candy, and on these older, older G4 machines, it really, really does show. Um, this has a core core image, Quartz Extreme uh, supported graphics card, and it runs uh, Leopard absolutely brilliantly. But what I'm trying to say is, Quartz Extreme or core image, you have to have that if you want Leopard to run respectably. Um, the higher end PowerBook G4s will run it fine. Um, PowerMac G4s again, absolutely fine. Um, Tiger, Tiger was the last sort of PowerPC optimized, like specially for PowerPC optimized version. Uh, for these G4 and G5 machines, um, and Tiger's really, really nice, but it's very, very outdated now, um, and people are even complaining that Leopard is getting a little bit insecure for them, but Leopard's six years old, I mean, people still use XP, that came out in, what, 2003? Leopard's a really, really nice OS, and, um, yeah, it's, it's really personal preference. If you want quick, snappy UI, um, without a core image, Quartz Extreme card, then it's got to be Tiger. If you have a, a decent graphics chip, then you've got to go Leopard because you're just going to have so much, much uh, more support. So, primary machine use, uh, G4. If you've got a high end G4, I'd say Quartz Image, uh, Quartz Extreme, um, and core image support, and it's at like, say, 1.25 gigahertz and up and max out the RAM, all that sort of stuff, you'd have a really, really nice machine, whether it's a PowerMac G4, uh, PowerBook G4, whatever. Um, a PowerBook G4, they're, they're beautiful, beautiful machines. Um, you can get an MDD, dual 1.25, dual 1.42 gigahertz, max out the RAM to 2 gigs, stick an SSD in there, um, GeForce 4 titanium, you just got a brilliant, brilliant machine there, and although the MDDs are very, very loud, and the PowerMac G4s in general are very, very loud, the dual dual PowerMac G4s are, are pretty quick machines even in this day and age and um, main machine use I have no problem. G4 superb as long as you have a machine that can run Leopard. I don't I wouldn't use Tiger as a main machine operating system in 2013. It's just too outdated and too uh, insecure I think. So uh, G5s now. Um, now we get proper serious. I mean you've got the high end. High-end PowerMac G4 MDDs, high-end PowerBook G4s, main machine use, yeah, they'd be fine. G5s are a completely different league, guys. Um, I went up when I was making up my ranks through the PowerPC world. I went from, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head now, I believe it was an 867 megahertz 12-inch PowerBook G4, so a couple of models down from this PowerBook, up to a 
a dual 1.8 gigahertz Power Mac G5, and honestly, guys, it was like I was running on a, on a brand spanking new Mac Pro. That's what it feels like. The speed increase between a, a, even a high-end G4, like this is a 1.33 gigahertz with 1.25 gigs of RAM, uh, the speed increase in one of these up to a dual 1.8 gigahertz G5 is going to be out of this world. I mean. Uh, a dual 1.42 gigahertz MDD is gonna give a dual a one point say, say a single 1.6 single 1.8 uh, gigahertz G5 a serious run for its money, but then you get up into the dual processors, dual processor 1.8, 2.0, uh, then you get dual core which is uh, 2.0, 2.3, 2.5, 2.7, and uh, then of course the quad 2.5s and Honestly, guys, so I'll get onto them in a minute, but they are just absolutely beasts. Um, a a 1.6 gigahertz G5, you're gonna sort of go. Uh, I probably should have went for a 1.42 gigahertz uh, MDD. Um, if you can cope with the with the noise and stuff, you get extra hard drives with the MDD, and uh, I think the MDD a dual processor MDD would would beat out a, a single processor G5 in some, if not most, tasks. Um, but Guys, a dual processor G5, dual core G5, even both of them, main machine use, no problem. Um, and just before I sold my dual 1.8 gigahertz G5, um, I had it downstairs while I was waiting for the bloke to pick it up, and I just said, you know what? And to my family, I just said, you know what? Why don't you just give give the G5 a little a little go for a couple of weeks and um, plugged it in, and they had no problems doing whatever they wanted to do, email. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, eBay, anything like that. Word processing, Apple works, iWork09. Uh, my little brother has a little guitar, he, he uses GarageBand on it. And G5, it's a perfect, perfect main machine. Uh, main machine. Machine. <laughs> and for the price they're going for, uh, you can't beat them. I mean, they're struggling to sell now, they really, really are. Um, You've got like power books, which are still going for like high-end power books now, not the titaniums, the aluminium 1.5, 1.67 gigahertz. They're going for a hundred, hundred and ten, hundred and twenty quid. Um, and then you've got G5s, uh, which are going for well, a dual processor would dual processor 1.8 gigahertz would go for about hundred quid. And it's just unbelievable you can get that much machine for that much money. Um, it's not only the speed you get from them; it's the real the reliability. Uh, the reliability, um, they are rock solid machines, some of them. Don't bother with the liquid cool models um, if you're a little bit queasy and you're not ready for liquid coolant uh, leaks because they are infamous for breaking down and leaking fluid everywhere. Um, and uh, well, that's where it goes onto the quad G5 then because you've got to think it's liquid cooled. I believe it did have a revised, uh, revised revision of the the cooling system so they are slightly more reliable and they say the dual 2.7 gigahertz but um they're still liquid cooled and there's still a, a chance that they're going to crap out on you one day um but really guys the quads are absolute beasts i think they bench about 3000 in uh 3500 in geek bench which is absolutely un unbelievable this thing benches five and a half five and a half six thousand so you can sort of get a sort of gauge that the quad G5 is absolute beasts. Uh, get a Quadro FX 4500, 16 gigs of RAM if you really want to go all out. Uh, again, SSD, um, absolute beasts. Um, G5 is a beast. And people who say that Leopard is an outdated OS, I think that's down to personal preference. But as long as you can put up with Leopard um, in 2013, I mean, there's still support for it. I mean, you've got 10 for Fox, Aurora Fox. Camino, which has been recently discontinued. Um, there's still PowerPC, PowerPC support out there. Um, runs iTunes 10, unfortunately not 11. Uh, I, I was just waiting for the day they'd uh, drop support there. But a G5, main machine use, no problem whatsoever. Uh, anything from a single 1.6 gigahertz, you're going to have to have a little bit of patience up to a dual 2.5, quad 2.5 G5, which are just going to eat through anything you chuck at it.
So, uh, this video was slightly rambly and wasn't quite as well formatted as I uh, wanted it to be, but I just wanted to blurt a load of information at you. People who say you cannot use uh, PowerPC Mac in 2013 are doing something wrong, because you absolutely can. Um, you've got to look at Linux as well, you can't just look at OS X, because there is a thriving community around uh, PowerPC, PowerPC support in Linux, whether it's a uh, Mint PowerPC, uh, Debian, uh, Lubuntu, um, they're all constantly updating and supporting PowerPC, which is really, really nice to see. But um, I know most people buy a Mac to run OS X, and that's totally understandable. And I still 100% stick to my word that Leopard is a fantastic operating system, and um, I think it will be for at least another couple of years 100% usable as, as a main machine uh, OS. So, Super super quick brief overview. Overview. G three, primary sh primary machine no go. Secondary machine yeah. If you get yourself a high end model for just doing simple very simple tasks, uh, forget internet altogether. Pretty much that doesn't stretch outside the mail application. Um, G four uh, low end G four. Um, I I wouldn't wouldn't go there at all if if for primary machine use, but. A higher end one, anything say 1.25 gigahertz and up with a decent graphics uh, card that works well under Leopard, then uh, go for it. I, I really do think G4s are incredible machines, and uh, I think the fact that they are still usable, at least in my instance, in uh, 2013, as I said earlier, this PowerBook, you could take the Mac Pro a week, for a week and I, I'd cope just finding this PowerBook. Um, but make sure you get yourself a high-end PowerBook G4 or a dual processor Quicksilver or a dual processor MDD uh, with a decent graphics card again. So, uh, secondary machine, yeah, a low-end low end Power Mac G4, uh, sort of digital audio, whatever, for old games, uh, running Tiger, absolutely great. Um, again, PowerBook G4 Titanium's in a similar instance to an iBook G3. Would be good with again added support for internet because it would run Leopard under under certain circumstances uh, with Leopard Assist. Um, so yeah, G4 across the board, great uh, primary machines. If you get a later one, earlier earlier G4s would be great. Secondary, third, fourth, fifth machines, uh, absolutely. And then uh, G5s. Um, I really do have a soft spot for the G5. Um, draw a lot of power. Um, you have just got to keep that in mind. But um, they are really, really are great machines, and uh, anything from a single processor, 1.6 gigahertz, up to a quad, uh, 2.5 gigahertz, is going to serve you absolutely brilliantly as a main machine in 2013. So my voice is starting to go now. I've uh, talked quite a lot this video, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, guys, as I said earlier, there's going to be absolutely loads and loads of PowerPC videos uh, revolving. Uh, around this guy mainly in in the coming months, whether it's just software optimizations you can uh, use or hardware upgrades, there's going to be a lot coming. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye bye.